Hello, welcome to this week's Simon. Live from Illumina headquarters, I'm Swati. And I'm Jacques. Of the Scientific Affairs team. Today we're going to talk about environmental effects on future progeny. You know, as they say, the sins of the fathers. And uh, did you see that paper in Science or Nature? It, it was in Nature. And yes, I remember because, it, it, you know, you don't often see these papers, but this paper had Homer Simpson on it. So yes, it caught my attention for <laughs> sure. And it's a great review to understand environmental effects on epigenetics and its effects on subsequent progeny. But, you know, there was this, um, you know, talking about environmental effects, we often hear studies about famines and how, um, how pregnant women that have gone through certain stresses, especially famines, have, have um, some effects that they see in their future progeny or in the children that they have. There's a review by Murray, and they, they mentioned studies of the Dutch hunger winter, which is a famine that occurred in the Netherlands, you know, during the winter, I think, in the like, 1940s. And it demonstrated that the maternal nutrition influences health of a child affected later, later in life. And it was, um, you know, it also mattered when this environmental effect happened. And, you know, whether it was early on during gestation or later on during gestation. And that was rather interesting. Yeah, it reminds me of the, the early studies of the agouti mice. Um, yes. I, I think everybody in this field pretty much knows about those studies. And it, uh, if you haven't seen it, it is very worthwhile just doing a, a, a Google search on that. Um, basically, they had mice that could change color based on the um, methylation state of one, of one gene. And they could actually see the inheritance of the, the, the coat color from one generation to the next. It's very and true. it persisted through, I, I remember, three generations, right? Yeah. And um, the other part is uh, also that uh, uh, some of these genes that, that are being methylated or um, uh, hypomethylated are, one of them is the PPAR alpha genes, which you really would expect because they really play a role in. Um, in your, your lipid metabolism, and they're being used by a lot of drug companies as a target for cardiovascular and obesity drugs. They indeed are. And, you know, when we talk about DNA methylation and changes in DNA methylation during pregnancy, um, you know, there's this paper by Wang that shows DNA methylation actually was reduced in the thalamus and the hippocampus of progeny from malnourished pregnant mice. I mean, that was rather interesting. Yeah, and but if you really think about it, it, it should work that way because epigenetics is a way for us to adopt or adapt really quickly to a change in environment. Very so true. If, if the mother is exposed, for example, to a lack of food, right. then the, the, uh, the offspring gets born primed and ready to go, and they're more efficient at, at utilizing food. Certainly. The opposite being true. So um, that kind of makes sense. But where it goes wrong is now if, if for example, a, a mother is, is malnourished, and the child now is getting a huge amount of food, and, and th that's where the obesity problem really comes in. And we're, it seems like to, today we've got more and more this kind of disconnect between uh, the parent and the offspring. Right, certainly. And you know, um, so there's this paper by Diaz that shows really nicely how epigenetics in, you know, in, in the parent generation can be passed down to future generations. And it's, it's a really nice paper. Uh, it's, it's, it's a paper where mice were actually olfactory fear conditioned. <laughs> and what that means is that mice were pretty much given a shock treatment on their feet when they smelled um, a chemical called acetophenone. It's a sweet, almond-like smelling chemical. And what they ended up doing was they did whole genome bisulfite sequencing. And amazingly, they were able to connect that behavior of fear with hypermethylation of this gene called, called OLFR151, which is actually an odor receptor of this acetophenone that the mice were you know, fear conditioned to. They also observed that the progeny of these treated mice had more neurons um, and a larger glomeruli regions that were sensitive to the chemical, not only in the F1, but in subsequent F2 generations too. I mean, that's a really interesting finding. It, it, it is amazing finding uh, that these epigenetic marks are, are inherited. And one of the parts that I did uh, that I thought was really interesting is they used in vitro fertilization with surrogate parents and from that in vitro fertilization, the, the progeny still inherited that fear for that particular um, 
uh, or, f or factant. And it, it's also useful to remember they, they actually use two different um, of, uh, fragrances, if you want. <laughs> Um, and so that they used one as a control for the other. So it's not just uh, the smell of something. It is a very right. specific smell that, that they developed this fear for, and this, this was inherited. It, again, it totally makes sense to me if, if you really think of how these animals have to adapt in the wild. Very true. And, you know, some of the skeptics out there might say, oh, well, you know, the mice had a specific background, and, you know, it had a genetic background, and maybe the gene was already methylated, or maybe it was more susceptible to methylation. Well, guess what? They tried this in a couple of mice strains, and they found the same results, which was pretty exciting. You know, such information transfer would be efficient, like Jacques said, an efficient way to inform their offspring about the importance of specific environmental features. If a mouse is getting shocked when he's smelling something, then, you know, that it, uh, apparently epigenetically he can transfer that information to yeah. his offspring saying that don't touch this, it's bad. <laughs> and, of course, it's not just shocks. It's almost being eaten by something. Exactly. And that's, that's similar to, you know, to, to what that means. But sorry, you know, again, we're out of time. We really appreciate you tuning into our show. We look forward to hearing back from you. Any comments, feedback, concerns, thoughts, we just love to hear back from you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.